In this video, we're going to talk about how to convert from one unit of pressure into another unit of pressure. So, what are some common units of pressure? One ATM is a common unit of pressure. That's the atmospheric pressure. At sea level, uh, that's the pressure of the air. You need to know that one ATM is equal to 760 units of torque. That's another unit of pressure. And that is equal to 101.3 kilopascals. And all of that is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. Now, this unit is typically used when measuring the atmospheric pressure of a barometer. That's basically the height of the column using mercury as a fluid. And all of that is equal to 14.7 PSI, pounds per square inch. If you ever measure the tire pressure of your vehicle, it's typically in these units, pounds per square inch. Now in chemistry, the most common units you'll see are ATM, TOR, and millimeters of mercury. Occasionally, you might see the other ones like kilopascals and PSI, but those three are more common. Now in physics, a common unit of pressure that you're going to see is pascals. One kilopascal is equivalent to a thousand pascals, just as one kilogram equals a thousand grams. Now pressure is defined as force divided by area. The unit for force is the newton. The standard unit for area is square meters. Now you need to know that one pascal is equivalent to one newton per square meter. So in physics, the standard unit of pressure is pascals. In chemistry, the most common one you'll see is ATM, and then other common ones are tor and millimeters mercury. But now let's go over some problems converting one unit into another. And we're going to work on a few examples so you can master this topic because you'll need it when solving gas law problems. So let's start with this one. The pressure of a gas is 725 torr. What is the pressure of this gas in ATM? So the first thing you want to do is identify the conversion factor. Now we know that one ATM is equal to 760 units of torr. So this is the conversion factor. Now in the next step, start with what you're given. In this case, we're given 725 units of torr. And our goal is to convert it to ATM. So in the next fraction, we're going to put the conversion factor within the next fraction. Now, because we have the unit tours on the top left, we want to put the unit tour on the bottom right. And the number that corresponds to tour is 760. So on top, we got to put the other stuff, 1 ATM. So you want the unit tour to cancel. And so that's how you can convert tour to ATM. So it's 725 divided by 760. So it's going to be about 0.9539 ATM. And so that's how you can convert units of TOR into units of ATM. Now let's move on to our second question. The tire pressure of a car is 32 PSI. That is 32 pounds per square inch. What is the pressure of the tire in ATM? So what is the conversion factor between PSI and ATM? So here it is. 1 ATM is equal to 14.7 pounds per square inch. So just like before, we're going to start with what we're given. We're given 32 PSI. And we're asked to convert it to ATM. So because we have the units PSI on the top left, we're going to put PSI on the bottom right, which means ATM has to go on top. The number that is associated with the pounds per square inch unit is 14.7. And the number associated with ATM is 1. So just like before, we want the units PSI to cancel. So it's 32 divided by 14.7. And so the pressure is 2.177 ATM. And so that's the answer. 
Number three, the pressure of the air on a mountain is 0.843 atm. What will be the height of the mercury column in a barometer? So let's draw a picture. So we can produce a mercury barometer by pouring mercury liquid onto this compartment. And then we need to fill a test tube with mercury and then flip it upside down. So we need to do this to remove any air molecules inside the test tube. So we want this to be a vacuum. Our goal is to calculate the height of the mercury column. So everything inside here is just mercury. Mercury is a liquid metal. So how can we find the height? Now, if you recall, 1 atm is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. So at sea level, which has a pressure of 1 atm, if you take this barometer and measure the pressure at sea level, the height of the mercury column will be 760 millimeters of mercury. So all we need to do really to find the height is simply convert this pressure into millimeters of mercury. There's nothing else that we need to do. It's not really complicated. We just got to convert from one unit to another. And this is the conversion factor that we need. So just like before, let's start with what we're given. That's 0.843 ATM. And we're going to put the units ATM on the bottom so that they will cancel. So it's going to be 1 ATM on the bottom and 760 millimeters of mercury on top. So let's cancel these units. And then let's multiply 0.843 times 760. So the height of the mercury column is going to be 640.68 millimeters of mercury. And that's all you need to do. This is the answer. Number four. The pressure of the air at a certain valley below sea level is 117 kilopascals. What will be the height of the mercury column in a barometer? So we need to convert the units from kPa kilopascals to millimeters mercury. So we need to identify the conversion factor. 101.3 kPa is equal to 1 atm, which in turn is equal to 760 millimeters mercury. So this is the conversion factor that we need. So as always, we're going to start with what we were given. So that's 117 kilopascals. And then we're going to put the units kilopascals on the bottom. And so it's 101.3 kilopascals for every 760 millimeters of mercury. So hopefully you're getting used to the process of converting one pressure unit into another. So it's going to be 117 multiplied by 760, but divided by 101.3. And so the answer is 877 0.8 millimeters of mercury. Below sea level, the pressure is going to be higher than the pressure at sea level. As the elevation decreases, the pressure will increase. But if you go on top of a mountain where the elevation is higher, the pressure will be lower. So here's the last problem. The air pressure inside the tires of a certain truck are 50 pounds per square inch. What is this pressure in units of torr? So what is the conversion factor between PSI and torr? Now we know that 14.7 PSI is equal to 1 atm, which in turn is equal to 760 units of torr. So this is the conversion factor. So now let's convert it. So we're given 50 PSI and we're going to have to put the units PSI on the bottom right. So I'm going to write 14.7 pounds per square inch, which equals 760 units of torr. So in my calculator, I'm going to type in 
50 times 760 divided by 14.7. So it's going to be 2,585 units of torque. So now you know how to convert the pressure from PSI to units of torque.